welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, if I had a dollar for every time someone asked me which SDR receiver should I buy, then I think I'd be very rich. However, the answer to that question is very difficult to answer because there are two main points you have to consider. Now, number one is your budget. And secondly, what is your area of interest, i.e. what part of the frequency spectrum will you most likely want to listen to? So why is it important to know what part of the frequency spectrum you want to listen to before purchasing an SDR receiver? Well, this is because not all SDR receivers cover the same frequency range. Most SDR receivers will cover something in the range of 25 megahertz up to 1.7 gigahertz. Now this is a fair chunk of bandwidth, but what if you want to listen to medium wave or long wave or ham radio operators between 29 megs and 1.9 megs? Well, if your SDR receiver only goes as low as 25 megahertz, you would need another piece of hardware in between your SDR receiver and your antenna. This would be called an upconverter. Now there are two popular upconverters. One is called the Hammer Up from Nuelec and the other is a Spyverter made by AirSpy. Now the drawback is that this will cost you extra money just to be able to receive below 25 megahertz. So let's go through my top five SDR receivers that I've personally used and that I would recommend. So first off, we have the Nuelec Any SDR Smarty, which retails at around $30. Not exactly breaking the bank here with this one, but it's a very good starter receiver. The Smarty covers from 25 megs up to 1.6 gigs, so there's no native HF reception, but it does have some rather good specifications. So first off, it comes with an always on bias T. This is where the SDR receiver outputs a voltage on the antenna connection to power other inline devices, such as an LNA or a sawbird filter. The Smarty also incorporates a 0.5 ppm TCXO, so the frequency shouldn't drift too much as the unit gets warm over time. This, in my opinion, is a very good starter SDR receiver if you don't want native HF reception. Of course, you can go ahead and purchase an up converter if you wanted to receive below 25 megahertz. Now, next on my list is the RTL SDR version 3. Now, these started their life as a DVB-T receiver for receiving TV stations. But as time and technology progresses, so does the reliability and features of electronics. The RTL SDR version 3 retails at about $24, going up to around $35 if you want the antenna pack to go with it. Now, it has a usable bandwidth of 2.4 MHz, which means you can view 2.4 MHz across the band scope at the same time. The supported frequency range for the RTL SDR V3 is 24 megahertz up to 1.766 gigahertz. But what is interesting is that if you enable direct sampling in the software through Q-Branch mode, then the RTL SDR V3 supports receiving from 500 kilohertz up to 24 megahertz, essentially covering the HF portion of the spectrum. Now the RTL SDR V3 also supports a bias T, providing 4.5 volts on the antenna connection to power such things as an LNA or a sawbird filter. Now the next SDR on my top five list is the SDR Play RSP1A, which boasts a continuous reception from one kilohertz all the way up to two gigahertz. It can provide an ADC sample rate from two to 10.66 million samples per second, and between two and 6.048 million samples per second at 14 bit ADC. Now there is an onboard 0.5 ppm 24 megahertz T6O and it features bias T which provides 4.7 volts with a guaranteed 100 milliamp. Now the antenna connection is a single SMA female so if you have a different antennas for different bands then you would need some form of antenna switch to make it nice and easy. If you wanted an SDR play SDR receiver with more ports and take a look at the RSP DX and the RSP Duo models, which have more antenna ports. Obviously, these cost money as they are the higher range of SDR receivers from SDR Play. The RSP 1A is the cheapest of the SDR Play lineup, but with its continuous coverage without the need for up converters, makes this a really nice starter all in one SDR receiver. Now, the RSP 1A retails for around $100, and in my opinion, is a great starter SDR receiver. Please note that the SDR Play products are not RTL SDR based, so all of those packages that are custom designed to work with RTL SDR chipset will not work. With that being said, SDR Play's SDR software, SDR Uno, is extremely good and provides a really nice sounding audio. Now next on the list is the AirSpy R2. I absolutely love this little SDR receiver. It's small but packs a punch with specifications. The supported frequency range is the standard 24 megahertz up to 1.6 gigahertz. So if you wanted to receive below 24 megahertz, you would need an up converter. Now AirSpy manufacture a product called Spyverter, which I'll cover in another video separately. And this in line with an R2 
would let you receive all those signals below 24 megahertz. Now the R2 has a 35 dBm IIP3 rated front end, which should help with adjacent strong signals, and it also provides a 12 bit ADC. Now in software, you can switch between 2.5 MSPS, which can be useful for when you're using devices like Raspberry Pis, but it also provides 10 MSPS IQ output, which can fully support a nice 10 megahertz spectrum view with up to nine megahertz alias free. The R2 also provides a bias T at 4.5 volts, which as others do, can support powering external modules such as an LNA or down converter. The R2 is also plug and play on Windows Vista 7, 8 and 10, meaning that you don't have to mess around with installing drivers. You just plug it in, load SDR sharp and away you go. The Aspire R2 retails at around $170, depending on what you shop. Now the last one on my list is the Adam Pluto SDR. Now technically this is a learning evaluation board, but it has a wide band receive and transmit. When shipped, the Pluto covers from 325 megahertz up to 3.8 gigahertz, that's receive and transmit, although this can be easily changed via small software modification so it can cover from around 46 megahertz up to six gigahertz. Now I do actually have a separate video on how you can modify a Pluto, so go ahead and check that out if you already own one. Now, unlike other SDR receivers in my top five list, the Adam Pluto can transmit with an average power output of around 7 dBm. But you'll find this changes depending on what frequency you're on. I found that it was most powerful around 2.4 gigahertz. Now, the Pluto is also full duplex. This means that it can receive and transmit at the same time. Now, this is possible because the Pluto has a separate receiver and a separate transmitter along with separate antenna ports for receive and transmit. The Pluto SDR is fully supported with SDR Angel and a whole host of other SDR software related applications. But the best software package for using it as an SDR transceiver would be SDR Console from Simon Brown. Now SDR Console provides full duplex capability, which makes it really useful for satellite communications. I have a video dedicated on the add-on Pluto if you'd like to know more about this SDR receiver itself. Now you may wonder why the Hack RF1 is not in place of the Pluto. Well, the Pluto SDR has the ability to run over ethernet, which means it can be networked into your own network or even used remotely. Now for me personally, this feature alone gives the Pluto massive points and in my opinion, and that's personally what I want out of a transmitting SDR. Now this top five SDR list was not organized in any sort of order. And I'm not saying that there is a best SDR out of all of these, but what I am presenting to you are the products that I've personally used. And in my opinion, they all have their own part to play when I'm using software defined radio. There are some other SDR receivers and transceivers that I've not put on the list, such as the Lime SDR, HackRF, S by Mini. But the idea of this video is to provide some information to newcomers to the hobby and help them choose their first SDR receiver. Well, there you go, guys. That's the end of the video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.